Welcome to Tech Report. I'm Kate Williams. Well, the detection and prevention of cyber attacks is vital for Australian companies, ensuring the protection of intellectual property. However, a report by Juniper Networks reveals IT and security professionals doubt the ability of their own organisations to protect themselves from online threats. For more, we're joined by Director Greg Bunt. Greg, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. First of all, I just want to ask you, we're seeing so many headlines across the globe now, particularly in reference to to Korea and also China about hacking scandals and, and some really high profile cases of that. Has this been going on for some time and it's something the media are just picking up on now or have things really got worse? I think, Kate, the, uh, these sorts of challenges have been going on for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I think at the moment, though, we're seeing a lot more reporting on it, a little bit more activity, but cybersecurity is a global issue, mm -hmm. and we, we uh, need to engage our uh, organisations that way, and we need to uh, find ways to really defend our uh, intellectual property, as you mentioned, uh, against these sorts of uh, state-based attacks or, or commercial hacking. Yeah, there's a lot going on in North Asia around this at the moment and also some of the big US corporates. What about Australia? Are there some big cases here as well? Yeah, so we commissioned the Ponemon Institute to uh, research Australian organisations and just uh, make sure we had a good readout on exactly what was happening in the Australian market. Right. And what we found was that about two-thirds of these organisations that uh, were surveyed or their IT professionals within these organisations found that they were ill-equipped, Ill if you like, to prevent uh, cyber attacks uh, through very traditional means like web-based services. Okay, why are Australian companies so inequipped and are they worse so than other places around the globe or is this a, a worldwide story or theme? Sure. So I think if you look at the, the nature of Australian business, it's very much a, a lot of SMEs in this market. We're not you know, all multinational corporations. So we have some different challenges there and what that means is we're a little bit constrained for our resourcing, maybe a little bit different to say the US might be. So what we need to be able to do is take a much more holistic approach to addressing security concerns mm -hmm. and that means working with uh, organisations like ourselves, government organisations. Tell us a bit about what your organisation does do. Okay, so Juniper Networks are a provider of uh, networking security services mm -hmm. and have been doing so for over 10 years. So we provide services to pharmaceutical organisations, banking and finance, government and other organisations. You mentioned a, a lot of the, the SMEs or whatnot in Australia are the ones who perhaps are a little behind on this front. They're probably ones who also struggle to find the money in their budget. Is this something that they need to perhaps put up more as a priority or do you think some of them would be surprised at, at how affordable a level of, of security is? I think if you, uh, if you look at the executive level within these organisations, they understand that it's a, it's a business risk mm. and they're putting money towards solving these types of issues. What we do need to be able to do though is it's uh, balance that uh, desire, if you like, to provide security with the resources that they have at hand. And what that means is you know, engaging organisations like ourselves or the broader security industry as we uh, cooperate and they can best leverage our intellectual property uh, you know, to better secure their organisation. It's sort of so explained so broadly uh, in, in the general media hacking. We sort of get this idea that someone at a remote computer somewhere is getting into someone else's files. Can you perhaps give us a really basic interpretation of, of some of the major ways that this is occurring? So I think when, when you look at uh, you know, what we see and what the survey found was that the very traditional methods are still largely the ones that are being are exploited. So a traditional method is you know, loose password type of activity uh, or uh, people that have delivered uh, a web-based service and they haven't really secured it well. So very traditional types of things. I think the, what we see in the, the media more recently is the m way more complicated attacks, the, uh, uh, the more international based ones. But criminal activity at a broad level uh, will continue and you know, people just need to protect what they have. What's the, the major objective of the hacker in Australia? Is it for information or, or money or, or what not? I think traditionally it's been around you know, just straight out money. Yes. Um, and what we've seen is, and it largely uh, validates that, but again, there's many things people can do and, and you know, the, the Ponemon report actually does show that you know, by taking some very basic uh, security principles, we're able to defend ourselves okay, against those. Okay, so just give us a couple of examples that uh, perhaps the SME space can look at when it comes to this kind of thing. So I think if they had to look at uh, you know, 
going beyond some of the, the, the uh, tools that they've used in the past and move way more towards uh, some of the more modern tools. I think that's, that's a very, very good start. Organizations need to understand that you know, for most of them it's not their business to actually uh, provide security. So go out and leverage organizations that do provide business uh, security as a business. It's a big issue at the moment. Greg Bump from Juniper, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Appreciate you very much. It. Cheers. We're moving internationally now and it's business as usual for South Korea's tech giants despite the recent threats from its northern neighbour. Factories are keeping production up to avoid disrupting this region's vital tech industry supply chain. While the world holds its breath waiting for the next big provocation from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, across the demilitarized border with the South, it's business as usual. The country's consumer tech giants have their factories running at full speed. Conglomerates like Samsung and 